Fans were ready for this one. There were some creative signs in Memorial Stadium. This probably was the winner. You're not in Kansas anymore. Welcome to the land of Osborne. And that was directed at the Jayhawks, and that was the winner of the creative sign contest. The series between these two teams is the third longest in the NCAA Division I, the 99th meeting between the Huskers and the Jayhawks. Only Kansas and Missouri and Minnesota and Wisconsin have met longer than the Huskers and the Jayhawks. Nebraska having won now 24 straight games in the series. Kansas coming in ranks rank number 13 with a 7-1 record. They kick off to the Cornhuskers, and Corey Dixon thought about bringing it out of the end zone but thought better of it. And Nebraska starts off first down and 10 at the 20. And this Kansas defense that was supposed to be pretty tough against the runs for the Jayhawks. Dana Stubblefield, he has made some promises about tonight. And we'll see if the big guy could come through with him. The linebacker is very active. Larry Thiel, number 35, leads the team in tackles. Very hard worker, say the coaches. And in the secondary, Charlie Bowen, four interceptions. He leads the Jayhawks in that category. He plays in strong safety, number 22. it open at the 40 and to the 46 yard line Hassan Bailey prevented a touchdown and now a late marker comes into the fray 24 yards Ron this game's going to be one in the trenches tonight Kansas has a very strong defensive line matched up against the strong offensive line in Nebraska five yard face mask defense Derek Brown gets the call on the tailback counter. Watch Lance Lundberg and Ken Malin pull from the backside. Open it up for him. A good block on the outside by the wide receiver, Abdul Muhammad. Opens it up for Derek Brown. Derek Brown breaks the first big play of the night. In fact, Calvin Jones, who is the other part of the Weebacks, number 44, actually is known as probably the bigger play breaker. But it's Brown who electrified this crowd early. They run the reverse. Muhammad comes to the near side, looks for a block, and a good job defensively. Not many folks were left around, but Robert Vaughn stayed at home, played off his block, and knocked it out of bounds. That could have been a big play, Mike. Could have been, but Jim Scott missed the block on Robert Vaughn, number 38, and he was there to make the play. Tommy Frazier, the starting quarterback from Manatee High School in Bradenton, Florida. Visited here in February when the temperature was 60. They told him it never got cold here and signed him. He was also recruited by Clemson, and a lot of people thought he was going to end up at Notre Dame, but he chose the Nebraska Cornhuskers. The weather may be cool outside, but he has warmed things up considerably for this offense. the first down and Frazier goes to the 36 yard line it is Bowen defensively for the Jayhawks here's where Tommy Frazier is the most dangerous as a quarterback option quarterback Nebraska with two tight ends blocking so that Tommy Frazier becomes the ball carrier on the option Charlie Bowen number 22 makes the play but if they get the option going Ron that just opens so many things the inside running game in the play action passing game because the safeties will have to fill for Kansas. Calvin Jones into the lineup, number 44, the sophomore from Omaha, joining Derrick Brown. Thanks it to Jones. He's got a man wide open downfield. Gerald Armstrong, touchdown Nebraska. passing game is what you have to contend with if you're Kansas because they run the ball so well after running the option come right back with the play action fake watch Tommy Frazier set his left hand as the fake and then he finds Gerald Armstrong wide open down inside see the safeties have to contend with the run and they get so anxious to cover the run they allow the tight end down the middle and they also would put Jones in the game so they really occupied their attention as you look at Byron Bennett knocking home the extra point 
and in one minute and 30 seconds the Nebraska Cornhuskers have already served notice here in Lincoln tonight we are picking up where we left off last week against the Colorado Buffaloes. Take another look at the touchdown pass. Good fake by Tommy Frazier. Now just lofting the football downfield to Gerald Armstrong, number 95, who's wide open down the middle. Safety took the bite on the run. You see how wide open he is down the middle. Fifth career to catch all our touchdowns. How is that for a step? Well, he'll want to call his number a little bit more. If you're going to catch a <laughs> touchdown every time, call it a little bit more. Mike, he was so wide open. That's one of those things where you hope you don't drop it because there's nobody around you. Well, I'm sure Kansas will go over there and talk about this defensively. The secondary must check the tight end down the middle on play action. That's Douglas, Maurice Douglas, the senior from Columbus, Ohio. And George White, a junior from Allen, Texas, is to his left. Byron Bennett to kick it off. Seven to nothing. Nebraska, they score in the first 90 seconds on offense. This is Douglas from the 11. Walker's in front, breaks it open, almost gets to the outside, and will be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Let's take another look at the touchdown now. You're going to see Gerald Armstrong down the middle. But watch the safeties of Kansas bite on the run fake. See the safety step up inside. Now Armstrong's behind him. It's Katie by the door now. And to turn around, you can see his back was to the end zone. Pitch comes to Douglas. He'll take it just across the 30 to the 31. And let's meet the starters on offense for the Jayhawks of Kansas. Chip Hillary, Westerville, Ohio. The senior, he's the man that makes it go. Number 18, he runs well and he throws well. The wide receivers, Mike Gay is the big play guy. Number five, 22 receptions. And up front, we normally don't highlight two. But Hempstead and Jones, the two guards, because of the way Nebraska plays their defensive tackles, it is imperative that those two men have a good ball game tonight. Play action by Hillary gets on the corner and the quarterback got caught he will have the first down Reese got suckered inside and the play went to his side the open side of the field here are the starters on defense John Perella big number 92 Grand Island Nebraska we'll call his name a lot tonight the linebackers very active in fact Alberts and Hill on the outside extremely good Trev keep an eye on him tonight number 34 and in the secondary John Reese out of Houston Texas number six leads the team in interceptions and as we mentioned he is the young fellow that got caught on that last play number six Ron you want to keep Chip Hillary if you're Nebraska you want to keep him in the tackle box you don't want to allow him the corner he's a very good running quarterback and also can throw the ball very well that they are having an effect on Hillary. And they also have an effect on the backfield as they go one way, Hillary goes the other, and Ty Bird is there to stop him for no gain. It's important for Kansas to establish their running game here in the first seven minutes because if they can establish the running game, that will open the passing game. Here's a bust. Travis Hill, number 93. Tyrone Bird, number 8. Make the play on Chip, Chip Hillary on the outside, but a busted play. Straight ahead, Douglas with the carry. Will be cracked out at the 42-yard line. David White, a senior from New Orleans, is there defensively. 
Kansas playing without the services of Monty Cousins had to have orthoscopic knee surgery the starter at fullback and Mike how much of a difference does that make to the Jayhawks well it makes a big difference when you lose your starting fullback but you always need your second team guy has to play for you and has to be able to play the same level Chris Powell is more of a blocking threat than Monty Cousins but not as much a running threat Nebraska fakes the blitz. They stay at home. They set screen, and it's knocked away. John Perella, the big fellow we just talked about out of Grand Island, got a big call. Kansas had a pretty good play call. Chip Hillary just can't get the ball above the outstretched hands of John Perella. See, the offensive line just brush blocks John Perella, but you see how, how high he's able to get. He's 6'5 to start with, and then he jumps up and is able to get his hands on the football. Come down to Hughes at the nine. John Perella causes the fourth down, and the punt will take a break. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by the GM Card, the new financial vehicle. And by Energizer Batteries. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. Seven to nothing. Nebraska leading Kansas. This is their second offensive possession. This time, Frazier wrapped up inside. Stubblefield, one of the first men there, along with Don Davis, to make the hit. Tommy Frazier decided on Nebraska because he, he really was impressed with the fact that Tom Osborne coached quarterbacks here at Nebraska. He also has Turner Gillers, former great quarterback, who works with the quarterbacks. And Mike Grant, the senior, the fifth-year senior, has been a big help to Tommy Frazier. So he's had a lot of support from uh, people around here to develop into a good, solid quarterback. Second down to 10, straight ahead with the handoff. 5, 10, 15, 20 yards. And Derek Brown, it's just lighting them up tonight the way out to the 39-yard line. Robert Vaughn finally trips him up. Well, the battle of the trenches is being won by Nebraska's offensive line at the start. See the blocking and the hole and the nice block by Lance Lewis, the fullback, number 26, to open up Derrick Brown. But they're opening up some king-size holes in the defensive front of the University of Kansas. So the special teams had uh, glued them back inside the 20. But after that run, all of a sudden, great field position. Kansas fakes the blitz. They don't come. Stubble field. Breaks off his tackle. And Frazier will take it out to the 43. Davis will finally make the stop. Well, Dana Stubblefield did about as much as you can do as a defensive lineman, Ronnie. Beat the block of the offensive guard, and he hits in the back. Well, watch number 71 hit into the double team, split the double team, now get his hand on Tommy Frazier, but Tommy Frazier's just a little loosey for him, breaks up field, finally tackled by Don Davis, number 39. You have to understand it's Stubblefield, a 6'3", 285, where Frazier is 6 feet 195. Pitch to Brown, the block on the outside, you could hear it, quite a collision there, and he'll take it to the 46. Lassiter and Gilbert Brown <laughs> when on you, the tackle. That was Lance Lewis who threw that block. Well, when Mike. you run an eye attack, you better have a fullback that will block. A lot of people want to know why you can't run Derrick Brown and Calvin Jones at the same time. It's because you need a fullback like Lance Lewis in the eye formation to do the bulk of the blocking. Third down, the line to make the 49. Option into the boundary, has the first down, plus five, and now six yards more as Kwame Lassiter makes the defensive play for the Jayhawks. The key block there was Abdul Muhammad, a receiver, because what Nebraska is doing is blocking the man who is responsible for the quarterback on the option. 
Abdul Mohammed, number 27, made the block, which springs Tommy Frazier for the first down. Good look at Zach Wiegert, number 72. Sophomore out of Fremont, Nebraska. I have to tell you about a pair of shorts he wears on the before game day workout. Play action. Frazier maintains his balance once. Can't get by the second wave of attackers in a sack back at the 40. Kyle Moore, the first man to make the hit on him, but Hassan Bailey was the guy who was hanging on him initially. Bob Fellow, the defensive coordinator of Kansas, decides to turn up the heat on the freshman. Tommy Frazier tries to bring pressure from the outside. Hassan Bailey, number seven, really disrupts the play and allows the sack to come as the Kansas players. Number Kyle Moore joins in, number 96, but uh, Hassan Bailey with a good blitz from the outside. Second down, it's a loss of 15 yards on that play. wants a timeout so a timeout Nebraska eight minutes left to play in this opening quarter Huskers seven to nothing well the Weebacks we talk about them Derek Brown he has carried the ball tonight Calvin Jones has not although he has played and in fact you see what they average this tandem they are I backs but they call themselves Weebacks because of sharing time it will be Jones who will come in and play primarily in the second quarter. Brown tonight, four carries, 51 yards. Counter hit in the backfield, and Brown is going to have negative yardage on this one as Kyle Moore comes through and knocks him down for a big loss. When you talk about the resurgence of a program, you have to look at the defensive linemen because when you can recruit defensive linemen like Kansas is recruited, Bob Fellow, the defensive coordinator, you're going to be in football games. That's the re This is the change. You have a veteran quarterback, but defensive linemen are hard to recruit. Kyle Moore, 6'3", 250 pounds, makes the play. Straight ahead with the running play, and Brown still on his feet. Stiff arm and will be knocked out of bounds at around the 45-yard line. That's Lassiter who was hanging on to it. When you have a freshman quarterback sometimes and you have a long yardage situation, you play it safe early in the ball game and you hand the football off to Derek Brown. He's just as good as a screen pass sometimes. Now you punt the football to Kansas. Bob Fellow likes that series defensively. Stiggy prepares to punt to Bowen. Kicking into a 10 mile an hour win. Maybe gusting a little bit more than that as we look at the end zone shot, the coverage on this play. Low line drive kick. And it's going to take a Nebraska bounce as Bowen runs away from it. It will go inside the five yard line. Wow. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for an SEC Western Division showdown between number three ranked Alabama with exciting all-purpose man David Palmer against number 19 ranked Mississippi State. The biggest game ever from Starkville, Mississippi. An SEC shootout next week of CFA primetime, 7.30 Eastern time. Ron, you can change that three to a two because they'll be the second ranked team probably in the country. Yep, I think you're right. Hillary going to throw from his own end zone. Puts it up top and overthrown. Looking for Matt Gay. When you're backed up on your own three-yard line, opponent's field, loud crowd, you try to go for the home run. Chip Hillary to Matt Gay, but Kansas must get something going on the ground. I think this is the key for them. They have to get the running game. They have to get Douglas involved in the running game. Mike, just a moment ago on that... Uh, in zone shot of the punch you could see markings on the field this time last night this field was covered in snow not a deep snow but it was covered in snow tonight 32 degrees the wind as we said 10 miles an hour 16 degree wind chill factor but it's dry Hillary nobody open he'll run and out to the seven 
And let's go down to Adrian Karsten for a report. Adrian. Ron, Coach Godfrey just mentioned the loud crowd. Why I'm standing just right here in the end zone behind the Kansas offensive line. Now, there are 23,000 people sitting right here behind me. This is 57% of the entire crowd here at Memorial Stadium. McCartney complained about this crowd last week, said it definitely made the difference. I don't know how anyone can hear the signals once they come to the line. Okay, David. 6.20 left until the end of this first quarter. 7 nothing. as you look at Trev Alberts, the junior from Cedar Falls, Iowa. Look in pass. Has it complete at the 20, and they'll have the first down. It is Douglas, who they got out of the backfield, and Carmer has to make the play defensively. Good call by Glenn Mason. Chip Hillary just on the quick slant pass, taking and shifting out Maurice Douglas, the tailback, putting him on the strong safety, makes a nice catch over the middle. Steve Carmer on the tackle, but it gets good field position for the Kansas offense. Good for 17 yards, Mike. to the boundary pitches the ball very fortunate is Kansas and the fact that that never made connection with anybody Carmer came up applying the pressure remember one thing when you play an offense where you're optioning the football you're optioning against a team who plays against it in spring practice in fall practice and understands the option Nebraska understands how to stop that option play but Kansas must still continue to run this option Chip Hillary coming down the line of scrimmage. Mike, you see the hit? Look at the helmet break right there. He wears a shell off the top of that uh, headgear. Does Powell to uh, absorb more of the concussion because he has been knocked out several times and the top, uh, the top of the headgear or the shell portion just came right off as he threw the block. There you'll get a good look at it. I am impressed with the footing on this field as damp as it was last night and with the cold conditions, a new turf here in Lincoln, and nobody has been slipping or sliding at all, have they? George White out to the 16. Mike Anderson defensively. Good play by Mike Anderson. Kevin Steele, the linebacker coach, told me that Mike Anderson's been hurt, had cartilage surgery about 17 days before the Colorado game, and just keeps just keeps playing strong football for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Bang comes in a tight end. Second down, and the line to make, they need to take it out across their own 34. White in the handoff. He was juggling that football as Trev Alberts made contact with him, but he was able to secure it, and there was a marker down at the 18. Ron, Nebraska has changed their defensive style a little bit. See how they move. Trev Alberts, number 34, inside. Now watch him come off the corner and make the play on this 4-3 defense. See how they get the linebackers up inside. No one blocks Trev Alberts. He's so quick off the corner. The legal procedure is the call against Kansas. It's Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator in Nebraska. Concerned about Kansas running a game. Procedure, offense, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Penalties are hurting Kansas a little bit. How about the noise? Hey, I don't want to work. I want to stop. He's complaining about the noise, Ron. You hear him? Yep. But you, how in the world are you going to stop it? I don't think there's any way. Big play. That's how you stop it. Douglas turns it up. Wow, does he take a shot from Ty Bird? Also, Ed Stewart, number 32, the sophomore from Chicago. 
just pointed out, Trav Alberts, number 34, he is the designated player to come from the outside and hit Chip Hillary. See, the contact forced him to make the pitch to Maurice Douglas earlier than he would like to have made it. Tyrone Bird, number eight, on the tackle. You can see the shell off the top of that headgear again. They're going to have to get some glue. Yeah, fancy glue. What is that stuff? Strong glue, too. <laughs> Wait, that thing's getting hit. Pressure. Hillary will be sacked. Trev Alberts again. The last time our crew had this Nebraska team was against Washington, and Alberts was just everywhere, and he's starting off the same way. Having a tough time blocking Trev Alberts because of his quickness. He just beats the block of Chris Booth, number 76, makes the tackle on the quarterback draw on Chip Hillary. They have not controlled Trev Alberts to, to this point. Here's a weapon. As you look at the up blocking back, Eichloff, the, the punter, and also the place kicker for Kansas. Drive. This one's going to bounce. Taken by Hughes. Maybe a return of one yard. We'll take a break. 317 left in this opening quarter. Huskers. I mentioned the last time that our crew uh, did Nebraska was up against Washington. And this young man, we just called his name all night long. And Mike, he's starting off the same way this evening. This time and very tough ones as they load up the eye. Brown defensively. Looks like Kansas, when they face the eight man front, is going to line up or face the two back set with eight people in the box. You see the only three people over here that are not going to be in the box the corner, the safety, and the corner. So they've been eight people when Nebraska goes to the power eye offense. Under three minutes to play in this opening quarter. Washington trying to set up his block and a good job defensively as Guy Howard is the man who made the play. First series, Kansas played with a 4-3 defense, seven-man front. Now they're loading it up with one extra player, the strong safety, Charlie Bowen, number 22. So they really have eight people crowding the line of scrimmage on Nebraska at this point. Bob Fellow, defensive coordinator. Third down. They need the ball just across midfield. Frazier's pass too strong and too high. Tommy Frazier just too high on the pass and too much on the football. Too close to throw that hard. He really did zing that one. That one would have been a, a tough pill to hang on to at, uh, at that closer range. As you look at Stiggy, first punt tonight was not gathered in by Bowen and it cost him because the ball wound up inside the five and was 53 yards long. Pressure from the outside by the Jayhawks. Bowen, fair catch, and he makes it at the 24. ESPN Sunday night coverage of NFL football comes your way tomorrow, November the 8th, as the Cincinnati Bengals take on the Chicago Bears from Soldier Field in Chicago, 8 o'clock Eastern time. It's the premiere of our weekly package that takes us to the end of the season. The NFL is in your face tomorrow night only on ESPN. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten from Lincoln, Nebraska. The snow has gone. Later tonight, freezing rain is the prediction, but that is for much later. Fast track, 32 degrees here in Lincoln. Play action, puts it on a hip, going to go on top. Overthrows good. Mike, I think that wind is affecting uh, uh, Hillary just a little bit because he has thrown a couple where he has had uh, the ball just sail on him. Well, he needs to settle down a little bit. Uh, you know, it's early in the ball game. They've got the game under control a little bit more now. Defensively, behind only seven to nothing. He's at his best when he rolls right or left outside that tackle box. 
This is Douglas against the grain. Spin move, and he'll have a couple. John Perella got a hand on him, and Big John will knock him down. And let's go down to Adrian Karsten for this update. John, uh, Ron, rather you mentioned the wind. It is swirling down here. I would say 10, maybe as much as 15 miles per hour. I'm looking at the flags atop the stadium. You know, there's a 30 to 35 degree wind shift here, and it's swirling around down on the field, so it's really tough to tell how high or low to throw that ball. Make sure the trajectory is right. I know the punt's going into that breeze. It certainly seems like more than 10 miles an hour. Sets in the pocket, in the flat, in and out of the hands of Maurice Douglas, and he had him open. Well, the match that Kansas wants in passing situations is Maurice Douglas, 26 against safety, Steve Farmer, 31. Wide open, well-thrown ball by Chip Hillary, just dropped. Mike off with his third punt of this first quarter. We have 61 seconds left. You look at Ty Hughes. Number two, Corey Dixon. Very, very high, good coverage kick. Hughes makes the fair catch, and then he gets run into. 41 yards in the punt, but that's going to cost the Jayhawks, it would appear. Keith Rogers, number 16, I believe, is the player that uh, commits the foul. Contact, fair catch interference, 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, a big penalty, Ryan, because that's talk about field position. There's the fair catch signal. Now you're going to see 16 come in a little later. Now I'm not sure he wasn't blocked, and I can't see the whole way there, but uh, Keith Rogers, let's take another look at this, see if he did get blocked. I'll come back to it. Well, you're right, though. The Eichloff with a, with a beautiful punt, and they should be 15 yards further downfield, the other direction. Derek Brown straight ahead. Good move. 5, 10, 15, and he's out. Inside the 40, and Lassiter saved a touchdown. Take a look, another look at the penalty that caused the change in field position. To pick up Keith Rogers, number 16. No, he just, no, he he just, just ran he right into the foul. He, just, he was being blocked when the fair catch signal was made. Probably didn't see the hand up, but you still have to come under control. So Brown has 40 seconds left, and then uh, Calvin Jones will come in at eye back. He has really made the difference in this opening quarter for the Cornhuskers. Option play, Frazier. And a flag from deep, deep downfield as Bowen came up to make the play defensively for Kansas. Charlie Bowen's the type of player on defense. He's just going to always make plays for you. The gamer. Illegal push in the back. Offense. So now a penalty against the Huskers. You know, I was interested in Bob Fellow's description the other day uh, of Charlie Bowen, uh, the senior from Lawrence. He said he's not the fastest kid that we have in that secondary, but he is very smart and he's worked so hard and he has improved tremendously. Has four interceptions on the year. When I watch tape of them, Ron, you just always see him make plays. He makes the big plays for this Kansas defense. This is where you like to have Nebraska in long yardage situations if you're the KU defense. We've got 24 seconds left in this opening quarter. Then Nebraska will get the wind. As KU had won the toss tonight and deferred to the second half. A look at the penalties. First one against the Huskers. Brown again. Off to the races. Finally stopped. Inside the 15-yard line, Robert Vaughn defensively. Mike Keith, I think that puts him over 100 yards in this opening quarter. Very close to it. Well, the good news for Kansas is in five seconds, he'll be out of the game. The bad news is <laughs> Calvin Jones is coming in fresh. Here's the handoff to Derek Brown. Now, Robert Vaughn, number 38, makes a mistake here. He let
lets him outside. You see him play inside, now he lets him outside, which is a mistake because you try to keep him on the inside of picket fence. Now he has so much room to run, you have to come back to make the play on him. Ten carries, 108 yards in this opening quarter with five seconds left. Derek Brown, the junior from La Habra, California. Gets the pitch, has a blocker in front, and he is going to have it at the 11-yard line. And that is the end of the opening quarter, so let's take a timeout. Huskers 7, Jayhawks nothing, and Nebraska is threatening. this series he will stay in the game Mike I would assume until something definitive uh, they score or turn the ball over well I wouldn't take him out as hot as he is <laughs> 108 yards and 10 carries in that opening quarter for him in the end zone touchdown Gerald Armstrong his second six receptions six touchdowns career for him Tommy Frazier playing like a veteran. Mike, with the running game, particularly with a guy like Brown, goes the way it is. Boy, the play action pass just works to perfection. And Tommy Frazier, the good ball handler, but made a good decision of when to throw the ball to Gerald Armstrong. Concerned Bob Fellow, defensive coordinator, talking to the coaches upstairs. They'll make their adjustments when they come to the sideline. Except for a couple big runs by Derrick Brown, they played pretty solid defense. Frazier passing tonight, two of three, 47 yards and two touchdowns, and both have been to Armstrong, his tight end. Tommy Frazier makes this play because when he gets himself set and turned to throw, he's able to get enough on that football to get it to Gerald Armstrong, number 95. Bennett tries to put the Huskers on top, 14 to nothing. Gets a good one out of the hole to Mike Stiggy and he's good. When your running game is as solid as Nebraska's is, you have to worry about the play action pass. Watch him get turned though, it's squared away to throw. Throwing off balance still gets enough on the football to get it to Gerald Armstrong. It's an off balance throw to his tight end. And again, that stat on Armstrong continues to grow. He has six career receptions. All are for touchdowns. Two here tonight. Well, the key to this last drive was running, and look at these results right here. 335 yards, 64 rushes against Missouri, against Colorado, 373. 358 is what they average per game on the ground. If you're going to win in this conference, you better run the football, and Nebraska knows how to run the football as well as anybody in the country. Look at tonight's numbers, 123. The interesting thing is they've hit with the big play both drives they've only used up two minutes and 29 seconds a drive of 130 and a drive of 59 this last one <laughs> Chip Hillary the senior out of Westerville Ohio 61185 and it is imperative that he take this Jayhawk football team and uh, get something going here. 14 to nothing down in, uh, in this place, and it can really be a pit. This is a pit whether you're behind 14 nothing or not. I'll tell you, it's the toughest place to play other than Florida State, I think. Play action. Pass. 
He's caught by Douglas. Did he have possession? Yes, at the 27. You could see 92 John Perella in hot pursuit. Here's what Chip Hillary does best when he can get on the corner and throw the football. Now you got the pass and run option. Just lost the ball to Maurice Douglas. See if he had control of the football. Nope. <laughs> well, I didn't think he over. did, but they gave it to him at the 27. You tell Travis Hill and Trey Elvert, you better make sure you check him on all bootlegs. Douglas, and he'll take it out over the 30, and there's a the first down. And that's what Kansas needs. Nothing really fancy. Just keep moving the chains and get back into the football game. Also, it's a good idea to keep the Nebraska offense off the field. Well, that's the series there. That's the, the on first down. They faked that play and rolled out to the right and threw the ball. Second play, they came back and ran the ball. So they just got to keep Nebraska off balance. But you have to move Hillary around. And I know Glenn Mason feels like that's when he's at his best. This running play will go absolutely nowhere as Hill is there. And also, you can see Perella standing there cheering on. Let me explain something about the back of uh, John's headgear. Uh, Perella wears 92, and all of them have their numbers there. But he also, you see that 70 up above. Mike, when we did the Washington game, Jamie Lieber was the right defensive tackle. He broke a leg in that game. And for his buddy, he wears a number 70 on his headgear. That's a reason for the double numbers. for a seven yard loss. Well Nebraska knows that Chip Hillary likes to move to the corners. Watch the pressure from the outside. They will not allow him to be able to break contain to get on outside to throw the football. Good call by Charlie McBride the defensive coordinator. If that ball is not tipped, it would have been intercepted, I believe, by Ty Bird. As Harris had it whistled through his hand. The Nebraska defense is dominating the Kansas offense at this stage of the ball game. Kansas must get something going offensively. It's going to be a long evening for them. You look at Eichloff, Hillary, his numbers, two of seven for 24 yards. As he kicks it away to Hughes and Dixon. Now he is kicking into the breeze. Off the side of his foot. And it takes a while. That thing died like a, like a wedge. So let's take a break. It's only a 22-yard punt. 14 to nothing Huskers. He wants to throw. Got a man wide open. Touchdown, Corey Dixon. 46 yards. to nothing. We still have 12.46 left until halftime. Whatever number that guy dials Tommy Frazier, it has been correct tonight. Sticky with a good job in the hole and Byron Bennett knocks it home. Good field position. Nebraska Tom Osmer fakes the option. Now the post play behind the safeties. Robert Vaughn on coverage. Corey Dixon on the post. There's no help from the free safeties. They're up on the run. He's wide open for the touchdown. Mike, you know, there's one thing to keep in mind. Last year at Lawrence, Kansas jumped out in front of that ball game 17 to nothing. So 
as you mentioned, this is a tough place to fall behind, so I guess it's not out of the question, but Kansas desperately needs to get something going offensively. That, by the way, the longest touchdown pass for Nebraska this season, 46 yards. When you talk about Nebraska, they've been in a lot of big games. They're used to the big game atmosphere. They're used to television. They're used to all of this. Very emotional night. The 27 seniors' last home game. I know when you coach a team and you have them seniors, uh, it's an emotional time in the locker room before they come out. And this Nebraska team's fired up. And here in Nebraska, like many schools do, before the entire team comes out, they, they announce them individually. It's going to go into the end zone. George White will watch it go over his head. And now here comes a late flag in. I saw the hit, but Mike wouldn't dare guess on who it's going to be against. Dead ball, personal foul, kicking team, 15 yard penalty. the bottom of your screen and see if you uh, see what happened with number 86 in red. Dwayne Harris, number 86. Ball's dead. Whistle's blown. I think they're saying he's, he hit, ran into the player after he heard the whistle. So there is a Nebraska error. Let's see if it leads to any help for the Jayhawks as they get good field position at the 35. Quick out pass. It's Matt Gay, and he will be tackled at the 42-yard line by Kenny Wilhite. Nebraska jumps into their type of eight-man front here to leave Matt Gay in a one-on-one -on -one situation on the outside. You see Matt Gay one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, the eight-man front inside. Just a three-step drop by Chip Hillary. Get the ball out to Matt Gay for a good game. Douglas tries to get a little stutter step to the outside, and there's nothing there. Let's go down to Adrian Karsten. Well, Ron, this is what they're going to go with. A lot of this quick out to the side, and they're going to run it up the middle. I've been watching something throughout the early part of this game. Kansas comes to the line very short or very narrow splits with their offensive linemen, and Nebraska knows that they cannot come up between those guys because they're shoulder to shoulder, so they're going to try and run it right up the middle or pass short to the outside. to White. He is going to be caught from behind by Alberts. Wow. What a ball game he's having. The tight splits Adrian's talking about. Number 34 off the corner. Trey Alberts takes on two blockers. Makes the play on George White. George White really should have set that up a little bit more. Let his two blockers try to take Trey Alberts outside and try to cut behind him. White also had his ankle turn just a bit on the play as he hobbled off the field. Look at the wind take this one. That thing just made it die. Now does take a Kansas bounce, but it is not very long. So at the 41-yard line, it's a 23-yard punt. Let's take a break. Coach Roll on the sideline talking with his offensive players as it is 21 to nothing. Nebraska with 10.52 left until the halftime. Calvin Jones has 10, now 12. Lassiter defensively. Mike, 17 unassisted tackles by Kansas tonight. That is the 11th one made by a defensive back. Well, that's not a good sign because you don't want them to be your leading tacklers. Will Shields, number 75, with a key block for Calvin Jones, number 44 on the counter play. Field position's been great for Nebraska. It gives them all kinds of luxuries in play calling. They 
fakes it to Jones. Wants to throw. Does an incomplete. Looking for Gerald Armstrong. And in case you have joined us late, this is the storyline of this one so far. First downs. Uh, 2.7 yards gained by Kansas, rushing yardage a total of 20, and Nebraska 11 rushes, 110 yards. Frazier, 3 of 4, 93 yards, and 3 touchdowns. Calvin Jones, and he will take it to the 40-yard line. It's Don Davis who comes up to take his feet out from under him. Number 26, Lance Lewis. Watch the eye fullback. He's such a good blocker. Six foot, 225 pounds. Just cleans it out for both Derrick Brown and Calvin Jones to be tailbacks that gain a lot of yardage. You have to have a solid fullback in the eye. And Kansas can't go to sleep with him either, Mike, because he averages eight yards per carry. Field and will be hit and knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. Steve Harvey there to make the defensive play. Kansas showed their quickness on defense. Tommy Frazier with a busted play, yet Steve Harvey with good speed to be able to make the play on the fast quarterback. Tommy Frazier starts to the right, doesn't see anything develop, and tries to come backside. It's a play he probably ran in high school. Steve Harvey makes the play on him and uh, throws him for a loss. Kansas glad to see Harvey getting healthy again. He had injured an ankle earlier. Sticky with his third kick of the night, and this time has the aid of the wind behind him. That's Bowen. this one for the far sideline and into the end zone won't get it 43 yards in the kick ESPN continues its exclusive coverage of Thursday night CFA this week with the weekend kickoff show 745 Eastern time then it's Southwest Conference action number five Texas A&M will take on the explosive Houston Cougars that one kicks off at 8 o'clock Eastern time all this Thursday on ESPN 21 to nothing. Our score with 8.51 left until halftime. It has been all Huskers. Play action to Douglas. Hillary now running for his life and incomplete at the 40. Chip Hillary bought time and threw a pretty good pass. It probably should have been caught. Pat Rule, the offensive coordinator, said about Chip Hillary, he said he has a Saturday gear. He's just a game player. Very competitive and uh, never makes excuses. Just a good leader for the Kansas offense. Mike, he's three of nine for 31 yards. And the, the other term that uh, Coach Rule used about him was he said he has a lot of hidden yardage, things that he does that you don't really notice in the stats. at the 26 yard line that'll bring up a third down and uh, Kansas will need about four Stewart defensively for Nebraska Kansas is having a real difficult time controlling Trey, Trey Alberts and Travis Hill from the outside the outside rush is really affecting Chip Hillary no place for him to step on the pass pass game so trying to always move and trying to throw on the run look at Travis Hill. He's a senior from Pearland, Texas, which is just outside of Houston. Blitz coming in the middle. They pick it up. Pass is complete to Gay, and you can see he stepped right over the marker for the first down. Matt Gay just with a little quick out. They've had success with the quick out. Quick passing game, the five, six yard passes, and they just have to be patient. They're 21 down. Be patient with 8.32 in the quarter and try to get a drive here and get a touchdown in the end zone before half. Powell comes out of the lineup, but that's Chaka Johnson, number 20, senior from Detroit, who comes in. Short drop, pass, 
incomplete at the 45, and it's Maurice Douglas. And again, they get the running back in traffic, and they throw it complete. That's good for 17 yards. Well, that's the combination. Maurice Douglas against Steve Carmer, the safety. You got a running back versus a safety on the outside. It completed this pass twice, and that was incomplete one time, but he was open. from Wahoo, Nebraska. <laughs> Douglas hit by Perella as he will take it across midfield and the first time that KU has journeyed there in some time. This drive's got good mix to it, good running mix to it, good quick passing game. Uh, trying to take advantage of what they do best against this Nebraska defense. Such a pass rush from the outside that they have to offset it with the quick passing game and the runs inside. Douglas goes inside the 45. You know, actually, I thought they had earlier, but as as I think, Mike, this is the first time that KU has been across midfield in the ball game. Well, Maurice Douglas has carried the football. He has to be redshirted last year because of Tony Sands, the great running back. He knew he wasn't going to play, so he worked against scout team and knew he'd be the starter this year. So he asked the redshirt. He's the starting tailback this year for the Jayhawks. He gets a breather for a second. White, number two, comes in in his stead. Hillary going to go long, has a man wide open at the 20. It's bang, and inside the 10-yard line, first and goal, Jayhawks. Well, that's what the Jayhawks need. They need some success. Good call by Pat Rule, the offensive coordinator. Third and short, and he knows it's very difficult to knock out this first down. So with the little play-action fake, now you're going to see the tight end shoot to the outside here. Come, become wide open because everybody's playing run for Nebraska. There's the fake. Now the tight end down the middle. Number 92, Pete Bang with a big reception down to about the 12, 13-yard line. Pete is a junior out of Wichita, Kansas, 6'3", 240. First eight-yard eight line run. Right? That's all right. They set it up. First and goal. Hillary wants to throw. Looks for his other tight end incompleted. That's Dwayne Chandler. And the Chandler had position on the defensive back, Ty Bird. That was more with the pressure on the quarterback. Looks like they're going to get a call against Nebraska, too, down here in the eight-yard line. Chip Hillary with rolling now. See if we can catch the late hit by number 93, Travis Hill. Talk about respect for a defense now. First to go on the eight, the run defense in Nebraska. Kansas with a good play called by Pedro. Roughing the passer, half the distance to the goal, first down. So half the distance, and now Mike, they put it at the four yard line. And they this is the kind of drive KU needed. Good balance, been able to keep Nebraska off balance on defense. will score. <laughs> Maurice Douglas takes it in from the four yard line and it's 21 to six Nebraska as more oranges come on the field. This time from the KU side. Good. 
So let's take a break and one more look at the touchdown by Douglas. Our new score, Nebraska 21, the Jayhawks 7. We'll be right back. Twenty-one to seven, our new score is Douglas gets his eleventh touchdown of the year. And here's a look at the scoring drive. Very balanced. Eight plays, 80 yards, 237. Four pass, four run. This is Corey Dixon at the 11. All the way to the 39-yard line. Hassan Bailey is the man who prevented the touchdown. Tonight's Toyota Leadership Award winners are from Kansas, Dave Markham. He has a 3-2-2 in exercise science and has spoken to area youth groups about the importance of education. And from Nebraska, it's linebacker Trev Alberts. He has a 3-3 in speech communications and has served as a future business leader of America Volunteer. Toyota, proud to donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund on behalf of these athletes. Smoking tonight. <laughs> Temperature 32 degrees at game time and dropping. But thank goodness it is dry. Lance Lewis, we said he had an eight yard per try average and Kansas could ill afford to go to sleep and they caught him napping. Lassiter saved the touch. He's like the forgotten man in this offense, the fullback Lance Lewis blocks, 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 then all of a sudden you give him the football and he breaks through a big hole and picks up big yardage in the secondary of Kansas. That's 38 yards and give Jim Scott a lot of credit. The center threw an outstanding block. Touching that left knee. Did he hurt himself a little bit? Calvin Jones. Little stutter step inside the 22 to the 21. Bowen from the strong safety is there to make the tackle. Kansas just having a tough time with the offensive line in Nebraska. When you look at this offensive line, they're just so big and so athletic, and they're having their way with the front of KU. See the block on Stubblefield look like he even hooked his arm, the left guard. Charlie Bowen, 22, makes the play. Lewis comes back into the lineup, the senior from Scott City, Kansas. And look at the rushing yardage so far tonight. Calvin Jones, and it is first down Nebraska. They'll spot it at the 13. And Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Ron, coach has made a great point about Nebraska power of football. And right down the line of scrimmage, I've seen it this entire first half. Shields and company really throw their hips through. Kansas is more catching at the defensive line. They're not getting off the ball and really maintaining the area that they have to. That three yards either side of the ball, especially back into the Nebraska backfield. But boy, Nebraska is really controlling that line of scrimmage right now. Great shot of it right there from field level. the ball back to Jones will turn the corner at the 10 and dives forward and let's see where they're going to give him forward progress he'll spot him out just outside the five yard line Hassan Bailey pushed him out and Nebraska offense can't do anymore they're running inside they're running the option outside the threat of the play action there they're owning the Kansas defense and when you talk about that offensive line Ron three 300 pounders in that offensive line but like Tom Osmer was talking about the other day, Zach Weaker, 6'5", 310 pounds, will dunk a basketball in a 4'8", 40. So not just big people, but athletically. You think a guy 3'10 can dunk the basketball, but Zach can do it. Jones will score. Zach Wiegert, what a block he threw. And I talked about the shorts. I asked him if his brother, who played here prior to him, had willed them to him. And he said, no, they just, they're purple. They have holes all in him. He wears his regular red shorts underneath them. This is no contest right now. The game is being won by the offensive line in Nebraska. Wiegert said he was very superstitious, so he wears them every day before a game. Bennett 
gets it, and it is 28 to 7, Nebraska Cornhuskers. Zach Wiegert in his shorts here. On a, you're going to see him on a block. Number 72 takes a step, blocking against Sylvester Wright. Just enough, long enough for Calvin Jones to make the cut. Gerald Armstrong on the outside with another key block. Cracked down the contain, and Calvin Jones in the end zone. 28 to seven, Nebraska. And Mike, while we've got a couple of seconds, you have coached here uh, against Nebraska. Take us a little further as far as what you experienced. You, you said that this place, along with Florida State, two of the very toughest to play in the country. Why? Well, it's a tough place because the fans are right on you. There's not a track in this stadium, so the fans, all the seats, they're right on top of you, and uh, they're very vocal, but it's just a tough, it's a great home field advantage for Tom Osborne and the Nebraska Cornhusker. What KU needs to do is just regain their composure. They had a nice drive on offense, go back to the things that are working for them off for them offensively and then defensively I think they're going to have to take some chances. They have to blitz a little bit, have to get in some eight-man fronts and make Tommy Frazier beat you throwing the football. You see the Nebraska players asking the crowd to become even more involved. Bennett's kick. Uh, this one will be returned by White. Tim Brando, let's get an update from you. What do you have, partner? Another big one today in the Big Eight. For those of you that follow those two teams, you know you like to keep up with the Buffaloes. They rebounded well, thank you, after their shellacking to Nebraska. Lamont Warren had two touchdown runs. Here's one of them. 28 to nothing over Oklahoma State. More coming up at halftime. That's an impressive win, and I'm sure it took a couple of days to get their real focus at Boulder after a stunner like they received here last week at 52 to 7. Douglas. Oh, nice move to the outside, and he's not going to wind up with maybe but one yard, but most backs would have been dropped for a loss. Bird made the tackle. See the penetration Nebraska is allowed to get. Travis Hill, number 93, gets up the football field. You see the block. It's a cutoff block. Tight end does not know that Douglas coming back. And then number eight, Tyrone Bird steps in to make the tackle. And then Big John Perella, who never quits, the sack Godzilla is what they call him, comes back after missing him once and helps out. Pass incomplete. Ooh, my goodness, Smith got unloaded on by Kenny Wilhite. Talk about Colorado and their win. That probably the thing that hurts them most in this conference right now runs the tie. Uh -huh. That Oklahoma. Oklahoma because yeah. you always hope somebody's going to knock both these teams off. One will take care of the other one tonight, but there's still some games to be remain in, in this schedule. But uh, that tie is going to hurt them. Mike, this is such a far more confident Nebraska football team than we saw earlier when we did that game against Washington. I think there's a big difference. Number 15, Tommy Frazier, has evolved as a quarterback. You're right. They try to set the screen, and they do, and Powell can't hold on. It's incomplete. Douglas, I beg your pardon, 26. Ron, now he makes them a complete football team. They're playing strong defense. They've got a great offensive line, backs. Tommy Frazier is the missing ingredient that's plugged into this team now. Chip Hillary to the sideline, and another discussion on what they can do to change that sea of red that seems to be all over the Kansas backfield so far. Nebraska is coming after him, and they get the kick away. Hughes runs a long way and makes the fair catch. Ron, they're dangerous here again, Nebraska, because they have the ball again at the 50-yard line, so that gives Tommy Frazier the run and pass possibilities. That's another very short kick, and Eichloff is awfully good, but the wind, uh, I think if we checked with the Bureau that it's far more than 10 miles an hour because that was less than 30 yards, and he's had three, I know, that have been less than 30 in this quarter. And you're right, Ron. He may be the best kicker in the country, Dan Eichloff. Cal Jones, number 44, the lone setback behind Frazier. They set a screen, and that's who they go to. Jones gets a block and he's off to the races. Caught inside the 10. Wow.
You want to watch a screen set up. Calvin Jones is going to step up, block, and just move to the outside. And two linemen are going to get in front of him here to set the block. Tommy Frazier sets up. It's a deep set. There's a dump off to Calvin Jones. Now watch the blocks set up. 89, William Washington with a block. And like I say, Nebraska can choose about any weapon they want to go to right now. Everything's broken. Vincent Hawkins, 38, with a really fine block on the play. Option to the open side. Jones will be shoved out of bounds, shy of the five-yard line. That was Ronnie Ward defensively. An awesome offensive display. When you watch Nebraska, what they've accomplished in this first half. Inside, outside, throwing the football. Two minutes and 57 seconds left until halftime. Huskers 28, Jayhawks 7. the middle and he will score his second touchdown well Andre McDuffie number seven replaced Lance Lewis at fullback and he lit him up too with a block but they're just controlling the line of scrimmage just keep repeating that they just are winning the battle at the line of scrimmage against Kansas defensive front Jim Scott also with a good block. McDuffie. Byron Bennett trying to put the 35th Nebraska point on the scoreboard. And he does. Let's take one more look at this touchdown, the second by Calvin Jones of the night. Well, you take Lance Lewis out, and then you put in number seven, Andre McDuffie. Watch him go straight ahead and put a block on you. Look at that block where he just crushes the linebacker. And it was Scott in front of him, number 51. Andrew McDuffie, a senior, six feet, 200 pounds, out of Euless, Texas, just outside of Dallas. Oh, you thought maybe a lot of people thought Nebraska would have a letdown after the Colorado win, but I was talking to one of the coaches, and he said when the game was announced to be on TV, players wanted to play on TV. They all talked all week. We're on when the nation's watching. And, and I'll tell you what, they have come out ready to play. When you, and again, when I repeat, when you have seniors' last game, last home game, it's an emotional time for the seniors and all the football players on this team. Folks, this is a very good Kansas football team. I mean, they're seven and one, and have been extremely impressive. But they've just been dismantled so far. George White. Good heavens, what a hit he takes at the 27-yard line, and he bounds right back up. It was Moss who almost took his head off. <laughs> his head coach comes up and said, are you okay? Take one more look at this hit. Folks, you're going to see a George White get just leveled. Watch this. Well, you heard it anyway. You may not have been able to see it. George didn't see you it saw, either. I to say, you saw as much as George did. He thought he was out there on that highway. Trev Alberts again. He's just in the backfield almost as quickly as Maurice Douglas got the handle. having a career game here in the first half. Trav Alberts. Douglas will come out of the lineup as we're about to go under two minutes until halftime. 35 to 7. Huskers. Short drop and a quick out pass. Gay has it. Just short of the first down. It's John Reese who is out there to make the defensive stop. 2.08 to go. Maybe it's a time for an out and up with Gay. Gay's having success on the outside. Chip Hillary throwing the quick game. 
try to get one throw down the field here with 2.08 to go on the clock. They run the option, and the pitch to White turns the corner and across the 45 and is pushed out at the 49. More than enough for the first down. Will hike defensively. It's a gain of 12. Glenn Mason feels like George White's his home run hitter. Coming up at the halftime, the Delta Fawcett Report. The showdown out in the desert in Tucson today. The Irish. Boy, did they roll today. What a shocker in South Bend. And Southwest shockers as well as you look at Glenn Mason. And Glenn's got to be somewhat in a state of shock himself. He is down 35 to 7. We still have over two minutes to play in this opening half. Hillary going to go on top. And it is intercepted by Kenny Wilhite. Lacursey is the man that he wanted, and Lacursey did not turn around until the ball was almost there. Wilhite had already taken position away from him. Well, the ball was underthrown. Kenny Wilhite's in great shape on this Chip Hillary pass. Look at the coverage. Great shape, both the Nebraska players. Kenny Wilhite, number 19, able to go up high and make the interception. Very happy man on the sideline as he gets the pick off. Calvin Jones goes for a couple right up the middle. Gilbert Brown is there to make the stop. And the other bad news is Derek Brown's resting on the sideline at 100 yards he had in the first quarter. <laughs> at 108 yards in that in the first quarter, you're right, Mike, on 10 carries. And then Jones comes right into the lineup, and he's already scored two touchdowns. You stack those two guys together, now you might be able to give them a half each of the Heisman Trophy. play ball is juggled and I'll tell you Jones did the wise thing as he just went on top of the football rather than trying to handle it uh, by picking it up Hassan Bailey makes this play number seven he's in on Tommy Frazier before he can make a decision Mike let me make another point about we talked about the punny to Bikoff and he is so very good with the win three in the first quarter an average of 45.3 but into the wind in the second quarter three kicks only 24.6 and it has cost Kansas as far as field position cost them dearly in field position. Bailey you can see number seven getting off the bottom of the stick Kansas calls a timeout to stop the clock with 19 seconds left so we'll take it with them Huskers 35 the Jayhawks 7 focus please 35 to 7 Nebraska with 19 seconds left until the halftime but the Jayhawks call the timeout to get a shot at uh, either the punt return or for the block and they do have 10 men at the line of scrimmage. You have to go for the block here. Coming after Stiggy and he gets it away. Very high good coverage kick. Bowen with a fair catch at the 42 yard line. 47 yards on that kick. Hey Ron that was a good kick by Stiggy right there. Good pressure on him. He still was able to knock it out of there. To Kansas now to run 12 seconds off the clock. As we mentioned, the Delta Fawcett report coming up at halftime. All the scores and also uh, a couple of the shockers that happened around the country today. Very good Boston College football team found out that South Bend can be a very unfriendly place. Quick out pass has it complete to Gay and he gets shellacked by Wilhite. 
See what Nebraska is doing now with that quick passing game. They're going to say to Matt Gay, I'm going to give you five yards, but I'm going to trade you a headache for it. And that's exactly what they're doing. They just come up, smack him. Kenny Wilhite with a good hard tackle, and, and he's going to make you pay for the five yards. Glenn Mason has to be thinking about halftime now. The adjustments as he goes in with his staff and the things that they have to do differently. Get his team under control. See, it's almost like he is thinking about what he's going to say at halftime right now. It has to be. Yeah, pacing behind uh, that bench. Should be the last play of this first half. Hillary going to go up on top. In and out of the hands of Will Height, and Kenny could have had his second interception in as many possessions. So it is halftime, and our score, the Huskers 35, the Jayhawks 7, the Delta Fawcett Report coming up after this commercial timeout. half they just about everything as I mentioned that they dialed up uh, came up properly for them and Hillary paces on the sideline as his ball club will get an, an opportunity offensively to uh, to open the second half in a far different way from the way they played in that first half Let's go down to Adrian Karsten for this report. In the Kansas Jayhawk locker room at halftime run, not a whole lot of screaming and yelling by Coach Mason. He said, basically, look, everything has gone against us at this point. we got to go back to our base package. We're putting way too much pressure on ourselves, plus we've got 76,000 people in red out there expecting us to go back to the old Kansas way of happening and Kansas way of doing things, and that's losing. Don't let it happen. Well, they have an opportunity right here, getting the football to open the second half of play, and let's see what they change offensively, Adrian. Douglas runs up the middle, and he's going to go for five. Stewart is there to wrap him up. Well, the one thing I'm sure Glenn Mason told his team at halftime is we're 7-1. and one. You know, we're having a great year, uh, so we had a bad half. Uh, let's, let's go out and play a good second half and try to get back in this thing early in the third quarter, but it's going to take patience to get back in this ball game if they can get back in. Well, they were down huge to Iowa State and came back. Smith, the intended receiver, as you can see, that one was well underthrown. But if they're to get back in this game, Ron, number 18 has to bring him back. He's the man to make some click. He's 8 out of 19 for 105 yards and one interception. You know, Mike, you get the feeling in watching the way this one has gone. He has been taken out of his element, which is another reason that the offense has not had the flow that it normally does. Well, credit Charlie McBride. You're right. The defensive plan in Nebraska has taken him out of his element. Blitz up the middle. Pass is thrown and intercepted Tyrone Bird, and he will walk in. Touchdown, Nebraska. started every game the last two years he has just intercepted a pass for a touchdown his second of the year and traveled 30 yards Bennett to attempt the extra point and he's got it when you score a touchdown, first of all, you have to have pressure on the quarterback. John Perella, number 92 with pressure on Chip Hillary. Then you get man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. Tyrone Bird against Maurice Douglas. They've had success going to Maurice Douglas. Tyrone Bird was on him this time. Number eight steps in front for the interception and the score. Turnovers by the Jayhawks tonight, and both have cost them. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Ron, the one thing I didn't have time to 
to tell you was in the halftime speech over in Nebraska's locker room, Coach, o, uh, Coach Osborne said, look, we have taken a beating recently in the past two years about not being able to win the big game. Now's our chance to go out and prove to the nation how great we really are. I'll tell you what, there are a couple people up here I know are impressed. Wow, 42 to 7. Kick is going to come down to George White. I'll tell you one thing, when you look at Tom Osborne's football team, it's a different team than we saw playing at, at uh, Washington early in the year. They're playing with far more confidence, but we talked about earlier, they plugged in that freshman quarterback. This team's clicking on all cylinders. I know there are a lot of people out there that are that are doubters, and they say they like to play Nebraska come January the 1st. I have a feeling they're not going to be a lot of fun to play wherever they go on January the 1st, Miami or wherever. That's right. This is a different football team. Stewart will make the hit at the line of scrimmage, and Douglas just has no place to go. Ed Stewart's a little small linebacker, six foot, 205 pounds. He came here as a DB. The coaches moved him to linebacker. He quit. He said, hey, I'm a defensive back. I want to play <laughs> defensive back. He left the team for three days. They talked him into coming back and explained to him, Charlie McBride, a defensive coordinator, hey, you're going to be a linebacker, defensive back type, and he fits in great with this new defensive scheme in Nebraska. Glad he came back. He is out of Chicago. Only a sophomore. Gets out in the corner. This is what he does best. Has the first down, plus 10 yards more before going out of bounds. Reese finally forces him out. Good move by Pat Rule to get Chip Hillary outside. Use a different blocking scheme on this to pin. You see the receiver come inside and pin. There's the fake. Fakes number 19, Kenny Woolhite, then picks up yardage downfield. It's a good block by Matt Gay, number five. 42 to 7 if you went away. If you wonder how Nebraska scored so quickly, it was on an interception. That's going to make those tailbacks mad because scoring on defense. Put <laughs> away the other direction. Pumps it now is going to run. And it will be hit from behind. And again, it's Ed Stewart, our cornerback turned linebacker. Around those two. Tailbacks are going to tell the defense, hey, we only, we're splitting time. We need plays in there. Don't be scoring touchdowns for us. Well, that's like Armstrong, who had the two touchdown passes in the first half. They almost completed that short one to him, and I'm thinking, Armstrong didn't want to catch that. That messed <laughs> oh, up his record. <laughs> that messed up what we're talking about, too. He's got six receptions all for touchdown. He didn't want that 12-yarder. straight ahead I'll tell you what when you're 510 178 pounds and have to put a head down and go between the tackles in division one football it takes something below the belt doesn't it sure does George White is 510 178 pound junior excellent speed takes some fortitude Chaka Johnson number 20 checks in he's the lone setback Gets whacked down at the line of scrimmage. Travis Hill, the first man, <laughs> and on his knees with a high five. This was a matchup of lines tonight. The offensive and defensive lines. 93, Travis Hill pinches inside and beats the block of the offensive tackle, Keith Loniker, to make the play. Just great quickness by this Nebraska team. They're big and quick. Go on top. J. 
just overthrown. LaCurcy is the man he wanted. Will Height with the cover. Nebraska still trying to make sure they do not allow Kansas offensively to get in any kind of groove. See how they tilt the two defensive ends in? Now you're going to see the strong safety come also to put pressure on Chip Hillary. They want to rush eight people, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Rob LaCurcy covered pretty well again by Kenny Wilhite. Just not allowing Kansas to get any kind of rhythm going on offense. Well, you can see it right there. Only 8 of 21 passing. Pressure again from the outside. Gets it away, but it's underthrown. You can see 34, Trev Alberts, also 93, Travis Hill in the area. And it's fourth down. When you talk about a home field advantage, Ron, listen to this crowd for the defense. Tyrone Hughes will be the deep man as Hillary comes to the sideline and talks with uh, Coach Rule. Nebraska is not sure they're going to punt. They're in with a regular defense just in case. Signal four and is made at the 13. So we'll take a break. 42 to 7. Nebraska will be right back. Derek Brown, you can see the blocker in front. Rieger paves the way, breaks it open across the 30 and out to the 36 yard line. McBurrows holding on for dear life. Well, Ron, you, you know when a team's being dominated, when the adjustments they make at halftime is to go to an eight-man front team. Now they've got eight men in the box. Here's one, two, three on the outside. So they're going to try to play eight men against the run to stop the run. Nebraska comes back with Derrick Brown on the counter for a big gain. Just blocking everybody. They have one more guy up there to block that no one can find, and they're still off and running. Kansas just has to blitz. They have to make Nebraska throw the football. They have to stop the run. Got rid of it. And it was Guy Howard, number 90, who was hanging on to him. And now here comes a late play. I think it's a good call. He threw it for a lineman. I think the legs of the lineman. Now Tommy Frazier may win this argument, but it looked like he threw to a lineman. Okay, even though he's a freshman, still knows how to argue with the officials. <laughs> Might pick it up. Disregard the flag. Receiver in the zone. What he's saying is there was a receiver in the area. It looked like a lineman was where the ball went to. Let's see if we can find it on the replay. See where the ball ends up. Tommy Frazier on the run. There's number 75. Looks like to me like Will Shields. There's 72. Zach Wiegert, I don't see a, uh, I see a little further down the field, little further. Lance Lewis, but boy, I tell you, I don't know about that call. Get that one in Lincoln. Straight ahead with Lance Lewis this time, will go for short yardage, and it's Charlie Bowen, number 22, who comes off the bottom of the pile. It would have been interesting to see Will Shields, number 75, catch that ball. 6'1", 305 pounds, what he could do with it. Charlie Bowen just makes plays. Kansas defense trying to get active, trying to make Nebraska make some mistakes. Tremaine Bell comes in at wide receiver, number 80. Junior from Chicago. Brown. Burroughs took his feet out from under him. You talk about a guy that does not need much of a hole. Now Derek Brown can just skip through it the little smallest crack. Dana Stubblefield, number 71, gets blocked, gets a little penetration. Ken Malin, number 62, just occupies him long enough for Derek Brown to slither right by. 
Look at that average yards first down. That tells a tale. 13, almost 14 yards per try on first down. Play action. Looking on top. Boy, he had me open. Vincent Hawkins on a crossing route. And then he had him beaten. Hey, who did a nice job on that? It was Larry Thiel. The middle linebacker did not allow him to get across the field. Did exactly what he's supposed to do. Kept him from coming across the middle. And Tommy Frazier just looks so poised to me as a freshman. And the point that you made also is that the team is drawing from his confidence and poise. I think they're more confident because of that. Cuts it back inside. Runs into his own man. Boy, then he gets shellacked from behind. Kyle Moore is the man who got him. And I mean took him down hard. Mike Stubblefield. Well, I'll get to it in just a moment. Go Ron, ahead. here's how you stop the Nebraska offense. They only play with ten guys. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Quarterback seven, eight, nine, ten in the backfield. That's the way you can stop them on offense when they don't get the 11th guy in there. <laughs> a late flag. Offense, not enough guys on the line of scrimmage. Oh, they're missing one. The wide receiver forgot to come in. That's what Tom Osborne is talking with this club across the way. They still only have 10 in there. Now the point to make on Stubblefield. When we called his name just a moment ago, it made me think we just haven't called it all night. He only has one tackle in this ballgame. Well, they blocked him. Well, they get the 11th guy in now. Uh, we'll play with 11 this time. Wants to throw it. Sets. Got his man right there. And again, it's Vincent Hawkins. Not quite enough for the first down as Kwame Lassiter takes him out hard. You know, we, we watch how freshmen are starting to play all over the country and reminds me as I saw the Clemson score today, Kenny Hatfield uh, won a big game today against North Carolina and I heard him say where Patrick Sapp was the quarterback and he's another quarterback out of Florida, big option quarterback, everybody in the country wanted, but he's now starting to come around for Clemson. Well, he's a big young man too, Six four. Short and it's Brown. He weave his way for a couple to pick up the first down for Nebraska. We have gone under 10 minutes to play third quarter. Nebraska 42 to 7. Kyle Moore gets off the bottom of the pile. There wasn't a bad quarterback in his day also here in Nebraska. Played against him, coached against him rather when he was in here and uh, Tommy Frazier probably benefits a lot from that young man being on the sideline with him. You think that Turner was about as good as uh, Nebraska had here ever? I tell you, all I saw was the back of his jersey running down the sideline. Got to see the big number, huh? Got to see the big number. Big number on the board, too. Tommy Frazier, a freshman from Bradenton, Florida. His high school coach is Joe Canan. Used to be an assistant at Eastern Kentucky. So Joe Canan knows some football, and I'm sure he got Tommy involved in the option down there at Manatee. just made history for himself. He caught a pass and didn't score on it. That's people, his seventh reception career. Are the people booing? <laughs> they want to score. Gerald uh, caught two touchdown passes in the first half. Uh, career catches five and six. Everything he's caught has been for a touchdown until that one right there. But he did pick up the first down. But this is chump change to him. He's a little disappointed. Well, 
Nebraska has had the one-two punch with the Weebacks and Brown and Jones, and now you add the quarterback and the receivers. There's a one, two, three, four, five punch now, or bigger. Jim Scott, number 51, with a real nice block here for Calvin Jones. Good tackle by Kwame Laster, number eight. First down and ten. Calvin, the uh, the ball carrier, and look at this: Kansas, 88 yards rushing. Brown and Jones alone, 210. And Lance Lewis broke one off a while ago. He had 37 yards in the one run. As you see, well, the young man that we talked about, Gerald Armstrong, the junior from Ponca, Nebraska, uh, is shaken up on the uh, play. See, it's tough for Kansas to blitz, even though they're playing eight people because of the option and Tommy Frazier. They just give you so many problems with this offense. Fake the counter, sets to throw. Over the middle and too strong. William Washington is who he wanted. Boy, he put a zip on that ball to William Washington, number 89. Now, William Washington really was the starting tight end last year when Johnny Mitchell was on this team, Ron. Of course, Johnny Mitchell was drafted in the first round, so tells you what kind of player William Washington is. Kansas, 31 unassisted tackles, 21 by defensive backs. Well, that's a testament to the offensive line in Nebraska. Well. You look at this play, Will Shields, number 75, who is 305 pounds. Number 72 right behind him is 310 pounds. So you got about 630 pounds coming at you. Opening the hole for Derrick Brown. That's a 600-pound pull. I'll tell you what, Weger to me looks like he's going to be another great one here at Nebraska. He's the young man Mike talked about, 310 pounds, who can dunk the basketball. You could see him running on that pull. Looked very good. Makes it to Lewis, turns the option up, and that's a nice job defensively by Hassan Bailey. He's grabbed him around the waist and said, this is it, no further. Ron, I don't want to ruin the night for Lou Holtz because he had such a big win today, but if things would stay the same here tonight and they would win this game, Nebraska, and everything would end tonight, Nebraska would meet Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl. Uh, from talking to people across the country. That's one scenario. So, Lou, if you're watching this game, uh, I know you had a great win today, but uh, this is a team you may have to face in the bowl game. And we know Kansas is going to a bowl, so I mean, they're, they're having a great year, and uh, they'll be a, a good opponent for somebody in a bowl game. Lewis will score. Offensive line. You got to just credit this offensive line. Jim Scott, the center, comes off. Malin. Lance Lundberg, number 77, with an excellent block on the play. Take a break. 8.03 left, third quarter. Huskers 49 to 7. After last week's uh, huge win, 52 to 7 over Colorado. And with this one right now at 49 to 6, and we still have 8.03 to play third quarter. They are extremely excited. I have a feeling that the parties will go on and on into the night here in Lincoln. Cedar will kick it off. Cedar number 12 for Nebraska. There's over 
Kirk Douglas is head and out of the end zone. And Tim Rando, what do you have for us? Ron, it was Jim Plunkett's Heisman year in Palo Alto when they last beat Stan uh, the USC in this series. Here, Rob Johnson is picked off by John Lynch. You'll recall he had a big one against Notre Dame a few weeks ago. He had three interceptions on the day, did Rob Johnson. Bill Walsh's first ever win over USC in his coaching career, and the Huskies remain number one in the Pac-10. You know, Tim, didn't he even mention SC when he took the job at Stanford? I think that was a really important game to him personally. I, I think, think there was a quote attributed to him. That Lynch uh, for Stanford, boy, he's played some great ball this year for Stanford. Kind of be under pressure. Gets his pass away and has it complete. That's Gay. Number five, Gay. Every time you look up, Perella is in the backfield, but that time Hillary just made an excellent move to get by him and throws it complete for 18 yards. Kansas has been not been able to throw the ball downfield just with the pressure from the defensive line and the outside linebackers, Trev Alberts and Travis Hill, just hasn't been any time to get in sync offensively. Douglas goes straight ahead. Adrian Karsten, let's get an update from you. Well, Ron, you're looking at defensive tackle Chris Mamalanga sitting on the sidelines here at Kansas. Torn medial collateral ligament of his right knee. Tough, more tough news for Kansas. they got to go up against Colorado next week. But remember, it's 7-1. You know, they still are in the Big 8 race here. Hopefully, can't afford injuries like that, but hopefully they win next week. Obviously going to a bowl, but they still are in the thick of the Big 8 race. I'm sorry to hear that. And he will be lost for the remainder of the year, I would expect. Him. Pass intended for Gay. Ron, I think that's important for Glenn Mason and his coaches and his team, even though you're behind 49 to 7, is to realize that the strides, that you've made strides and, and having a great season, and uh, one loss will not change that. Lost a game early in the year to a Cal team that I thought was a pretty good football team. So they played good football, and you have to remember the positives. Third and seven on the option. They pitch it back to White. Almost gets the corner turn, and look who got all the way outside to make the tackle. 92, John Perella. Also, Connolly was out there to help. Just when you stretch the option out that far, you're not going to have a play. John Perella really running the line of scrimmage. Ron, we're going to fool around a little bit with our bowl matchups here. We called around our crack staff here, Billy Wandell and Todd Allen, called around to check the bowl. So maybe as we get to the fourth quarter, we'll see how entering the day the bowl picture looked. So it's the Werndell and Hallam magic, huh? That's right. Okay, we'll, we'll check that later. Halloween's gone, you know. kick and again the wind gets it as the ball will not turn over fair catch is made for at the 29 so let's take a break 622 left in the third it has been all Huskers <laughs> 622 left in the third quarter 49 to 7 Nebraska and a new quarterback in the ball game it is Mike Grant senior out of Tampa Florida 63205 Jones across midfield still on his feet and is inside the 40 yard line. Christian finally made the stop. That offensive line will shields with a big block but Mike Grant into the ball game now number one the senior quarterback the fifth year senior with a pitch to Calvin Jones number 75 red will shears with the shields with a block good block by Andre McDuffie on Ronnie Ward. Shields working down the field, opens it up for Calvin Jones. Got one block and just continued downfield and got another. Ron, I'm really happy that Mike Grant's in the ballgame. I, I watched an interview with him last night. Here's a fifth-year senior who lost his job to a freshman. And boy, was he supportive of Tommy Frazier. He says, I'll do whatever it takes. And uh, the team, and uh, when you hear walkouts all over the country, here you got a guy who lost his job who's going to be very supportive to the freshman quarterback. Kind of healthy and kind of nice to see. So he put the we in his vocabulary he's, as well as the IBACs. Team player. That was uh, Shields on the sidelines. They put the, the clothing on him, and he's going to take a break. It's 
Andre McDuffie, who is in the ball game, and he is the ball carrier. By the way, on Jones, he now is over 100 yards, 11 carries, 101 yards. And back in, in the first quarter, his uh, counterpart at the I-back, Derek Brown, had already gone over 100 yards in that quarter alone. You see Mike... Federal senior out of Gregory, South Dakota. He's in at tight end, number 88, 6'3", 230. The numbers on Grant, 44 of 88 passing, five intercepts, five touchdowns. Alvin Jones. Harvey from the middle linebacking spot on Sylvester Wright, sophomore from Detroit. First time we've seen him tonight. Is there to make the tackle for Kansas. Ron with 5.01 on the clock in the third quarter. It looks like now Tom Osborne had his, has his second offensive line in to give a rest to that first line. It's had such a great offensive showing tonight. We'll give you some of those names in just a moment. In fact, there are a couple of dandies in there. That's couple why I'm the, waiting for you to give them. The Z names. <laughs> throw and he is going to be hit and sacked. Gilbert Brown was the first man who got there. And it's going to be fourth down. So Mike, now don't let me forget. We'll get to those names on the next series. All right? Well, I'm not going to let you forget because I'm going to wait till you give them. Good play by Gilbert Brown, number 93, to make the sack on Mike Grant. They said they would use him a lot, and he's a big one. 6'3", 305, a senior from Detroit. Stiggy kicking with the win. And they got the pressure on him again. Bound at the 10, takes a Nebraska bounce, and it will be downed at the 10-yard line. ESPN continues its exclusive coverage of Thursday night CFA with the weekend kickoff show at 745 Eastern Time. Then it's the Southwest Conference Clash, Texas A&M, with leading rusher Greg Hill traveling to Houston to take on the explosive Houston Cougars. Start time is 8 o'clock Eastern Time. All coming up Thursday on ESPN. On Texas A&M with that win over Louisville today, really has a short time to prepare for the run and shoot, so it might be an advantage for Houston. You know, start week. they came up with the defense that was de designed by their now head coach, R.C. Slocum, though, for the run and shoot. Pass, he's caught. It's George White as they get him out of the backfield. Remember that thing they usually use, like two, two down linemen, linemen, four linebackers, and five defensive backs. And just played coverage all night against mm -hmm. the Cougars. I think R.C. Slocum was a man who uh, Jackie Sherrill was coaching there at the time, so... But I guess you don't just plug that in and, and have it ready overnight against uh, a team that throws as much as Houston does. Hey, Houston was beaten today, and we'll get to it in just a moment as White goes off the left side. They were beaten by a team from Dallas, the SMU t uh, Ponies, and I'll tell you what. Four years ago, they had 95 points scored against them by Houston, and a group of seniors did not forget. And I'll tell you, I want to say congratulations to those kids because that, I'm sure that tonight is a very big night in Dallas, Texas for that group of seniors particularly. And I hope they take a close look at whether they're going to get out of the Southwest Conference tonight. I hope they don't. Well, if the kids were going to vote, they voted today. Yeah, I think you're right. Maurice Douglas on the carry. He'll have the first down as Troy Branch comes over to make the tackle. Under three minutes to play, third quarter, 49 to 7, Nebraska. A lot of the second team defensive players in for Nebraska now, also. Douglas up the middle, big opening, 5, 10, 15, out across the 50 yard line. And he's all the way to the 46. That is Kareem Moss, who is holding on for dear life. So, Ron, when you talk about that, I know it's a topic of conversation now, how you play teams. I thought Denny Serickson had a great comment the other day. You, you should never go down for the, the game against West Virginia when they came back and you had some second teamers fumble. Well, you talk about sending a bad message. I think the voters, the AP, really sent a bad message out last week. Tom Osborne here with 2.32 on the clock has his entire second team in the ball game already in third quarter. Rolls the pocket, now delivers 
it and incomplete and here comes the flag. Miles is going to be flagged for the interference. He got him for his, his opposite hand, his left hand, his right left hand on the back of the receiver. Good call. Defensive pass interference. Official looks grumpy tonight. And Baron Miles, number 14. Now watch his hands. Ashande Smith. Jeez, oh, I don't know. I'll tell you one thing now. I'll tell you what. I can see why the official's grumpy now. He's not sure that call either. You know, Mike, one other thing about the Washington situation last week. Don't you think also, though, that a lot of people took into account the fact that Washington hammered a top 20 ranked team? No, I think they voted strictly on how can you be number one and lose it just on a performance of substituting. I think, Ron, that's where the mistakes made. I, I'm just, I think they, they write about running up the score and then they lose somebody down because they put their second team in and they fumbled the football. I, I don't understand that. It's just a bad message. Coaches can't win in this day and age. I'm telling you, you can't win. I don't disagree with that. <laughs> George White goes into the middle of the line, and uh, here are some scores coming in from the Big 8 Conference as uh, Michael continues his dissertation well, here. Well, I'm going to tell you one more. Notre Dame today faked a punt in the third quarter. I thought it was a great call. 37 to nothing. They scored 37 in the first half. Boston College could come back. It's early in the third quarter, and people are questioning whether he's running up the score. I think it was lousy. I mean, I, it was a good call. Listen, in the last two years between Tennessee and Stanford, Notre Dame has lost some humongous oh, yeah. leads at home. So, how so could I, you question yeah. that call? <laughs> who breaks off the tackle. That's a good second and third effort by him. Going to spot him out at the 19-yard line. Chip Hillary with a strike to Matt Gay. Setting up in the pocket, drop back passing game. Number 14, Baron Miles comes into the picture, misses the tackle. And gets some help as Kansas moves down in scoring position. My dissertation's over. <laughs> I was enjoying it. Well, I'm, no, I'm a one more. Mike Ditka. I'm going to get on Mike Ditka. Hillary, the other direction. Hit in the open field, and that's a good stop by Bonta Jones, a sophomore from La Pata, Maryland. My last thing, Ron, and I'm getting off this. Mike Ditka, for all he's done for Chicago, the Chicago Bears football, and I heard that call the other day the guy made on the coaches show, but I'll tell you what, the people don't realize all the good things Mike Ditka has done. He's a he's a gentleman, know him well, and uh, a great man, and uh, he's under attack. How can he be under attack? He's an institution. Again, I don't disagree with you. You've got to come up with something. It's mind-boggling to me what's you know, happening across this country. Maybe coaches. you've got too many writers in that city that don't have enough to do. The pitch on the option hit behind the line of scrimmage, and that is David Lever who catches White and stops him for a big loss. David Leader, an outside linebacker, number 42, reads the option, not blocked. He's going right to the pitch man and makes the tackle on George White. Clock is running under 20 seconds in the third quarter. going to go long in the end zone and incomplete Gay is begging for a flag to be thrown thinking that maybe he was face masked by Mike Hines but there will be no flag now that's good defense by Mike Hines number 25 just in great position here little bump yeah, I'll tell you what now. I don't know. His He's ball, in pretty good position, but... Uh, in a good position, his ball but, identification yeah. didn't turn around. But Matt uh, Gay is, is asking for face guarding. I'm not so sure he shouldn't get it. It's wrong again. That's the second time we've been wrong tonight. <laughs> you'll keep on many, it. yeah. Fourth down. Well, the end zone knocked away, and White... 
believe, is the man that he wanted. But two receivers, Gay and White, very close together. And Beeler knocked it away. Ernie Beeler in good position. Number 23, the second team defensive backfield. is able to stop the Kansas threat at the end of the third quarter. So let's take a break. The end of the third quarter. Nebraska 49 and Kansas 7. We'll be right back. Osborne and the expression is almost identical to what it was at the beginning of the ball game. It's hard to tell if he, there's consternation with him or not, isn't it? Well, there's one thing. He's enjoying that gum right now a lot better than he would be if he was losing. the left side well here is his career against Kansas speaking of Tom Osborne 19 and 0 the average margin of victory 40.5 the last 10 meetings average uh, margin of victory 47 points in average rushing yards a game 462 they don't look at me I was here I, I faced him uh, added to those uh, numbers some good football teams Turner Gill Mike Rozier Fryer Stein, Cooler, Remington, and remember them well. <laughs> well. You can hear the popping down the, in the trenches as uh, Schlesinger is the ball carrier. The offensive line that has taken over, Rob Zadiska is, uh, is at left tackle. Chris Zizda, number 64, is at uh, left guard. Terrace Chorney, 55. You can see him. There's Geske, number 59. Joel is a sophomore from Midlothian, Illinois. And T.J. Slansky, I believe, is in there someplace. It's Stockton, Kansas, number 78. Yep, he's there at uh, Edgar. Option, they string it out well, and Andre McDuffie will be knocked out of bounds, shy of the 40-yard line by Robert Vaughn and Kyle Moore. Down and 10. Ball on the Kyle Moore with a good play there, number 96 for Kansas. Still playing hard, the Jayhawks. You know, Ron Pepper Rogers took over the Ball Kansas program in 67. It was down and took them to the Orange Bowl. The success they had under Pepper. A lot of stories about him when I went to Kansas. He had nice staff too, outstanding staff. Dave McLean later became the head coach of Wisconsin. Dick Tomey, John Cooper, Ohio State. Play and on the counter tray, it's Benson Hawkins this time, and he will be stopped at the 40 yard line. Joel Wilkes is in at left guard now, sophomore out of Hastings, Kansas. 6'3, 270 pounds is Joel. A lot of pride in the Kansas program. Glenn Mason's thoughts now will go to next week when he plays the Buffaloes of Bill McCartney. He might want to call Bill this week and say, how did you get over the disaster that happened to you in such a quick time? Because uh, the Buffaloes look pretty good today against Oklahoma State. Pass to Hughes. And it looks as though he would have had the first down. Yep. And a flag comes in, and now another flag at the 49-yard line. McBurrows defensively. I guess that was a face mask because about five officials threw their flags. They all were able to pick this one up. Incidental face mask, defense, five yard penalty. Gerald McBurrow's number three may have been involved in that face mask penalty. And let's send it down to Adrian Karsten and get an update from him. Adrian? Well, Ron, with the kind of offensive output we're seeing from the Huskers tonight, a lot of uh, the credit goes, of course, to Coach Osborne, but to this man as well, Boyd Epley, who for almost 25 years has been the strength coach here at Nebraska. Boyd, with what we're seeing, this vintage power of football from Nebraska, is this the type of thing that uh, is a direct application of what you teach? Uh, we are very powerful because we train that way. We, we train with free weights explosively, which uh, is in the anaerobic energy system. That, that means that we're developing a fast twitch muscle fiber, which generates a lot of force. Coaches who uh, train in the aerobic system, like distance running and things like that, 
don't develop much force, and they develop a slow twitch fiber. All right, now that sounds like a change to me. All that distance running I was doing 10, 12 years ago playing didn't help me at all? No, it didn't. In fact, you'd have been a lot better if you'd have trained explosively with free weights. Back up there, huh? But Adrian, remember, you were left with the slow twitch. Boy, they definitely must have watched Adrian play. McDuffie, whoa, does he take a shot from Bowen? Charlie said, let me serve notice here. We're down big in this game, but I'm not finished hitting. Boy, that was a good lick. That's exactly right, Ron. This, there's no quitting Charlie Bowen. And as I said, he's a Lawrence youngster. 5'10", 195 pounds. He's a senior. Major crime and delinquency. Wonder if any of these guys were part of the 18,000 that went to see Midnight Madness uh, the other night for Coach Williams. They had over 18,000 there at uh, the arena. McDuffie caught for the ankle. He may have won, and it's going to be fourth down for Nebraska. Larry Thiel defensively. Fans one more with 11.15 on the clock. Come to go for the first down. Shaw, number 85, another one of the tight ends for Nebraska, checks into the lineup, and the Cornhuskers will go for it on fourth down. Mike Grant with the handoff to McGuffey, tried to hurdle somebody, there was no one there to hurdle. <laughs> he was getting ready to go up and over, but there was no place to go up and over, so he just stumbled forward for the first down. Mike, if he'd stayed on the ground, he might still be running. <laughs> what was it? I jumped at the ocean and missed. Andre gets ready to go airborne, and all of a sudden he said, whoa, there's no place to go, and he just is able to pick up the first down. Terrace Charney with a good block, number 55. A pass with Tremaine Bell, I assume, is who he was throwing for, but there was a miscommunication there between Mike Grant and Tremaine Bell. Nebraska now has gone over 300 yards rushing, 305 to be exact. Tom Osborne said one of the things that uh, was their game plan tonight, they wanted to get Kansas out of sync. They did that early on. And he also said, we'll throw 20 to 25 times. And uh, that also is right on. Grant recovers his own fumble. Ron, next week we're going to get Alabama at Mississippi State. And there's one writer, Corky Simpson, a fine writer at Tucson, Arizona, the Tucson citizen, who's been voting Alabama number one every week. He believes they're the best, but he's the only one that believes that's been right in voting in the AP, but he's been voting them every week number one. Now they'll move to number two this week. Yeah, they should after Good what happened to team. Washington. Yeah. Defensively, I'm, I'm anxious to see him in person. Pass over the middle. That's thrown well short. Wanted Tyrone Hughes, but uh, Mike just had to get rid of it too quickly. Mike might want to move that tape off of his face mask there. I mean, could be in a sight range of the pass. We remember he had it. We talked about that the last time we had him on when, uh, when he played Washington. My first reaction was I thought it would make me cross my eyes almost. Shotgun formation. They set the screen to McDuffie. As a blocker in front, and McDuffie to the 21-yard line. And Charlie Bowen is being talked to by the official right now. Move to the shotgun, put Mike Grant back. Fades a little bit, caught. Kansas in a blitz. Hassan Bailey with the blitz, number seven, but Mike Grant was able to get the screen pass off. And pick up the first down. Charlie Bowen, you can see uh, he he's frustrated, and he he went after the guy pretty good. And the official talked to him. He didn't throw a flag though, but he did discuss it with him. Option play, and Grant decides not 
to make the pitch. Guy Howard is the man who, you know, stuffed it up there. Ron, Kansas has made some real strides in facilities. Monty Johnson, who is the athletic director there and uh, since has resigned, uh, really started the program back. The basketball hired Larry Brown and really made a commitment in facilities. And, and now Glenn Mason has the program in a, in a good direction. So uh, as, as we talked about earlier, the one thing you want to keep in mind is the positives of the Kansas football program right now. They fake the reverse that time as a flag comes down and McDuffie's going to be knocked down for a loss. Larry Thiel defensively. The one thing I hope they never change though at Kansas is that field house. Well, field oh, house. there's a lot of history there Boy, now. There are some good ghosts in that one, huh? Holding offense. I had the pleasure of being there when Larry Brown was there with Danny Manning and the great success that Larry brought to the program. Took over for a good solid coach in Ted Owens. A lot of history in the basketball program. Well you bet there is some great great tradition. Not only Fog Allen and uh, Mr. Naismith but the Baron of the Bluegrass uh, came out of Kansas. Dean Smith came out of Kansas. Uh, coach Miller at Oregon State came out of Kansas. There's some pretty good names right there. And a gentleman named Williams who's making a heck of a mark for himself there now. You hit a lot of them. Sings the pass and has it complete. That's Tremaine Bell. The junior out of Chicago. To seven. Huskers lead it. We're about to go under eight minutes left in this one. You're a senior on this Nebraska football team. A lot of memories are going through your head right now. The four or five years you spent here. Pitch to McDuffie at the ten, at the five, and let's see. They're going to spot him out at the five. Larry Thiel again. Nice, nice execution by Mike Grant on the option. Down the line of scrimmage, quick pitch. Andre McDuffie, number seven, tucks the football away and moves closer to the end zone. Mike, this is the 18th play of this drive coming up here. has to call a timeout as Hassan Bailey coming off the field so we'll take a break with him. This presentation of college football is brought to you by Saab who invites you to see the new 9000 CS at your local Saab dealer and by Anheuser-Busch who proudly brings you family talk. Let's stop underage drinking before it starts. Quarterback in the ball game for Nebraska, Tony Veland, 6'1", 190 pounds, a freshman. He is from Omaha, Benson High School. And back when Grant suffered the uh, broken collarbone in the spring, he became the number one quarterback. McDuffie hit in the backfield. It's a good defensive play by 61, Mike Steele. We're on advantage Nebraska has had and always has is they have good scout teams. They have big numbers in their program and they get a good look in practice. They have more numbers and their quality of their third and fourth team is a little bit higher than everybody else has with this walk-on program. And they really get great practice time. Now this is William Washington, the tight end. In fact, they didn't even know if he would play tonight because of injury. having to be taken to the locker room. We'll try to get a report from Adrian on him before the game is over. Senior from Tyler, Texas. Bielan on the keeper, and he's going to be hit and thrown into the arms of still another defensive player. Sylvester Wright was the first man that hit him. <laughs> the 
Nebraska 49 to 7. We have six minutes at 30 seconds left to play in this one. Glenn Mason continues to pace the sideline and knowing that he's got an important speech to make after this ball game, and that is to tell his guys to get back up because they've got a big one next week against Colorado. So this drive continues. One of the plays uh, that kept it alive was a fourth down play by Tom Osborne. Oh, Ron, I think what he's trying to do in his fourth down is he doesn't want to keep from scoring, but he can kick the field goal at any time to go to 52. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure he wants to kick the field goal to go to 42. I, want, I think he wants to run the football. He's running basic plays. I don't think he's trying to score, to be honest with you. I don't think he's not trying to score. But he doesn't want to take the field goal. With the running play, and Schlesinger is going to be hit and will not get it in. So your point is well taken. That's a perfect example. He just ran the ball in there and uh, to take the hit, turned the ball over. 21st play of the drive, and it ends. And a drive lasted for just over nine and a half minutes, Mike. Wow. And that's what he wanted. He wants playing time. So there's a timeout on the field. 5:28 left to play. The Huskers big. Frederick Thomas going to be tackled. And then the push on the helmet, that draws the personal foul call. And he'd already made a really good open field tackle, but that last effort is what got him to 15. Thomas lost his balance when he looked up just a sea of red, led by Bill Humphrey, a sophomore out of Libertyville, Illinois was coming after him. Thomas, by the way, 6 feet, 180 pounds. He's a sophomore out of Houston Elsick High School, Houston, Texas. intended for gay well short and let's talk about the bowl projections Mike you take it here well we checked around the country today and to be going into today of course the Rose Bowl Washington Arizona versus Michigan the Orange Bowl today looks like Notre Dame Nebraska Sugar Bowl Miami and Alabama if the season ended today Cotton Bowl Florida State versus Texas A&M or Texas of course now it's looking Texas A&M all the way with Texas being beaten by TCU we'll come with some more bowls here in a minute that Miami Alabama game would be a matchup. Here we go on top with this one and over to home. Kylie Brown is the man that he wanted. That'll stop the clock with three minutes and 24 seconds. Fiesta Bowl would like to have Southern Cal in there, Ron, versus BC, Syracuse winner, or Colorado, Kansas, whoever comes out of that match. Blockbuster Bowl was talked when we talked to people around the country, said it looked like Penn State versus Texas. Gator Bowl, either North Carolina, NC State versus Florida, or Georgia. Citrus Bowl, uh, Florida, Georgia, Ohio State, Wisconsin. And we'll keep showing you the bowls later. Off to punt. Moss is the deep man. And let's take a break. 316 remaining here. Huskers 49 to 7. And Cornwell will recover his own fumble. Mike here, a couple of numbers that are really impressive. The Wee Backs tonight. Brown, 15 carries, 156 yards. Jones 13 for 107 two touchdowns for him so on the season Jones 855 and Brown 863 wouldn't you like to have that headache as far as splitting time with that kind of talent? well that's the man right there that splits the time and uh, has them playing equally and uh, carrying the football yardage wise almost even Well, now John McMillan has come in at quarterback. I think he's just five or six. That's I feel like we're one. going through relief pitchers. Now 
Well, the, this is how the top five in AP fared today. Washington lost to Arizona. Miami was off. Alabama defeated LSU to go 9-0. Michigan wins over Northwestern. And A&M winning over Louisville to go 9-0. And we'll have all of those results, plus a whole lot more on the Residence Inn's College Football Scoreboard Show, which follows this game. Clock is down to 118 and counting. And Nebraska has made so many substitutions, I think they have 10 on the field again, don't they? So they just call timeout. So let's take a break. We'll be back to Lincoln in just a moment. 74 seconds left in this one, and Nebraska will kick the ball away as uh, Bowen will go back in a deep safety for Kansas. Stiggy's kick, very good coverage kick, very high and long into the wind. Bowen, oh, gets cracked down hard at the 21. Tonight's Visa players of the game are from Kansas, defensive player Charlie Bowen, and from Nebraska, linebacker Trev Alberts. Two outstanding jobs defensively for these guys, and as part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. As you look at uh, Alberts on the sideline, junior from Cedar Falls, Iowa. Again, operating at quarterback, the uh, the second quarterback that the Jayhawks have used tonight. We counted up. It's Barringer came in on one play. Nebraska has now used six quarterbacks in this ball game. A couple just for two snaps and right back out. Well, Tom Osborne has played a lot of players. If you're Glenn Mason, you only have one loss in the league. Nebraska still has to go to Oklahoma. They play Kansas State over in Tokyo, a much improved Kansas State team. They go to Iowa State, so it's still not impossible that Nebraska can lose a football game in the league yet. This is Levine with the ball carry, and he takes it out close to the 30-yard line. Clock running down to 16 and now 15, and that could be the final play of this ball game. In fact, it is going to be. Kansas is not getting back to the line of scrimmage, and Tom Osborne will continue his perfect mark against the Jayhawks of Kansas with a huge win tonight, 49 to 7. Again, final score: Nebraska 49 to 7. Stay tuned for the residents in College Football Scoreboard, which follows next. For Mike Godfrey and Adrian Carson, I'm Ron Franklin saying good night from Lincoln, Nebraska. Now let's go to Chris Fowler in our scoreboard studios.